Hello, here we are. Welcome back to Learn Economia and have a look into the choice between income and leisure. Let's discuss this here. We could see that this could be explained by using an indifference curve. Whenever you can have a choice between two goods, this is how you do. You will be having an indifference curve. You will be measuring good X here and you will be measuring good X, good Y here. And every point on the indifference curve will show same satisfaction. This is how you can consider the indifference curve. So it shows the choice between two commodities. Here we are making choice between two things, income and leisure. And how do you get income? If you go for work, you will be getting income. Otherwise, you won't get income. And also we could see that people would be made to work over time only by going for more wage. Otherwise people will not go for over time work. And we should understand that we have to do with the 24 hours constraint. Everybody is getting only 24 hours and we have to divide this 24 hours for our work and leisure. So you can earn income by going for work and how will you work when you go for work you are actually sacrificing some of your leisure and if you are sacrificing more leisure what happens? It shows you are working for more hours and when you work for more hours, your income will also be more. You can see that if you consider these two things, that is work and leisure, the two important activities that you can do. You could see that leisure would provide you direct satisfaction. But what about work? Work is something that will give you income and with this income you can buy some goods and only by consuming this good you will be getting satisfaction. And for the very same reason you can say that work could provide you satisfaction but that would be indirect. Definitely work would give you income which affects your purchasing power, which provides you satisfaction indirectly. So when we come to indifference curve application here, we have to consider both income and leisure here or both work and leisure here because it is only with work comes income. This is how you have to. Here we are considering a set of indifference curve. We call it as indifference map and the indifference map that we have considered here will be following all the properties of a usual indifference map and each indifference curve here will be following the usual properties of a common indifference curve. You could see that it is sloping downward to the right, it is convex to the origin, it will not intersect. If it all it intersect, it will violate the assumption of transitivity so it will not intersect at all just try to understand in this figure you do have leisure measured along your x-axis and income measured along your y-axis and income means work you do have ic1 ic2 ic3 and ic4 you know that ic4 gives you more satisfaction compared to ic1 because when you move higher, move to higher and higher indifference curve, it shows you are getting more and more satisfaction. The very same thing that is there with respect to a common indifference curve. Now, just take a point A here. So, when the decision maker is at this particular point, this person is willing to accept delta M income. So he will be getting delta M income. So just consider two points on the indifference curve. I see one and just draw 
line like this to both x and y axis. So this is a common point and that is how you got a point C. Okay. And that is how you get delta m here. So delta m or AC. So this much of income is there. Why? Because you are sacrificing this much of your leisure. You are getting this much of income for sacrificing this much of leisure. So what we could see is that you can have a trade-off. Trade-off between your work and leisure. Or you could see that it be, this is between your income and leisure. Because only with your work comes your income. And at different income leisure levels, you can have this trade-off. Now, however, we could see that when it comes to reality, the choice of income and leisure made by a person would depend upon a very important factor which would be the wage. He will see, the decision maker would see whether wage is higher or whether wage is lower. And this wage is something that we call as the opportunity cost of leisure. Why do we call it so? Because when you go for an extra hour of leisure, you are sacrificing your wage. So that is why you call it as the opportunity cost of leisure here. So le here opportunity cost means the next best alternative that you are foregoing. Now, Let's have something else to consider. You do have a budget line in the case of a usual IC budget line constraint. It is only with budget line you can have a constraint situation. Here too we do have a constraint situation. So just let consider a straight line where you consider both leisure and work along the x-axis and money income along the y-axis. I'll explain this much more. Just try to look at this figure. Here we could see that if you are at point C, you are earning an income of M1. Okay. So, just try to understand. Before that, let me tell you that this empty line actually shows a 24-hour constraint. And you could see that here you are getting OM1 level of income. How do you get OM1 level of income? Because here we are measuring the leisure along the rightward direction and work along the leftward direction. This is how we go. So at point C, you are reaching this particular point. So this is the borderline. If you move to this direction, it is the leisure part. If you move to this direction, it is a work part. So just by going for this much amount of work, you are getting this much amount of income. And the slope of this particular line, which is OM divided by OT. OM divided by OT. This would be the wage. Now, from this, you can calculate your income that is equal to your income would be is equal to OM total income. This is equal to OT times W. What will happen if you are increasing your leisure by one hour? I told you that there exists an opportunity cost here. If you reduce your leisure by one hour, definitely you can go for more hours of work. Again, what happens if you increase your leisure by one hour? Here, you are not. if you are increasing your leisure by one hour, definitely comes the role of opportunity cost. 
if you're decreasing your lesser by one hour, it, there, there won't be any opportunity cost. But if you're increasing your lesser by one hour, there exists opportunity cost. That is it. So, you are actually foregoing your opportunity to earn more income. And that is how you are increasing your leisure time and reducing your work time. So you do have a 24 hour constraint and we call it as the income leisure constraint. Because the maximum 24 hours is the only time available. Now come to the case here. In order to earn income, what we have to do? If we need income, this could be attained only with work. Only work will give you income. So this is measured along the leftward direction. And in the case of leisure, it is measured along the rightward direction. And the maximum leisure shows OT. OT shows either you can go for 24 hours of leisure or you can go for 24 hours of work. It's your choice. If you're going for 24 hours of leisure, what happens? You will be getting zero income. If you're using 24 hours for your work, you will be getting OEM level of income. So that is what it shows here if you are working for OT hours, your income would be OM and your leisure would be zero. The maximum amount of leisure time that an individual can enjoy per day again OT hours, 24 hours. What happens if you go for a leisure of OT? OT leisure means you are having zero as your work. So your income would also be zero. Now you can call this empty as the income leisure constraint. As you could see, we do have various various points on this line which shows various combinations of income and leisure and from which the consumer would be, not consumer, the decision maker would be making a choice like what you have in the case of a budget line. What happens if a person chooses C? Let us come to the explanation here. So, just draw from this point to x-axis and y-axis and this is a border here. So, here the person is getting an income of income is something that is equal to OM1. This is the income. And how is this person getting OM1 level of income? He is working for L1T hours or TL1 hours. This is the work time. And the remaining work would be that is OT minus TL1 or L1T. This would be the leisure which is OL1. So this is how you have to consider the scenario. Now, let's go for an optimal condition here. Now, we do have a situation of constraint and we do have the IC map. With this, we can go for the optimal condition. The optimal condition is something that you can have at a particular point when the highest possible IC touches the or is tangent to the, not touches, it's tangent to the constraint line. So at this particular point, the MR is between the income and leisure, which is the slope of the IC is equal to the slope of the constraint, which is the wage rate. So here at E, MRS would be equal to wage. So the person would be working for, the 
person here would be working for something that you can call as TL1 hours. This is the amount of work or L1T hours. And for this, the person is getting OEM1 level of income. And he is having a leisure of this much, OL1. Having said so, what will happen if this person is offered more wage? We are assuming that this person is now getting a wage which is W dash and we could see that W dash is more than W. This is a new wage which is an increased wage. If wage becomes more, what happens is that the person will be allotting more time for his work. And that is what we have seen here. We could see here earlier this person was at point E. Now the equilibrium point would be something at a steeper lesser income constraint which would be E K. This dotted line. So you will shift to a higher IZ which is IZ2. And the new equilibrium point is at H. What happens here? At H. You are earning more income. You could see that M1 is lesser than M2 or M2 is greater than M1. And also you could see that earlier you were just working for TL1 hours. Now your work time has increased. Now work increased to TL2. And what about leisure? Leisure has come down because of the 24 hour constraint and the trade off that we have here. Now, leisure is only OL2. And we could see that the person is now going for more work as a result of the increased wage rate. That's all regarding the scenario. I hope you could understand. Thank you for watching. You can like, share and subscribe to this channel for more videos. You can join our free telegram community. I'll be providing the link in the description box. Also, you can download the Learn Economy app. For that also, I'll be providing the link in the description box. That's it. Thank you for watching.